Elizabeth, Jonathan, KK, Lydia, Rachel, saw that you all popped in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump in uh, now that we're a few after and it looks like we've got a good crowd. I told myself I wasn't going to make a deck today because I was like, this is a really casual fireside chat, but I was like, you know what, let's just throw some, uh, some fun stuff up there regardless because uh, I'm going to make sure that I introduce myself and I, if I don't have the slide, I won't remember how to introduce myself, <laughs> but hi everyone to those of you who don't know me. Uh, my name is Emily Stewart. Uh, my background is in design thinking and social enterprise and facilitation. Uh, a lot of the things that we do here at Give Back Hack, uh, which is where I work and breathe and play and love and connect with all of my friends. Uh, but there are also a lot of other things too. I love being outside. I'm so glad the weather is better. Uh, spring has really just like rejuvenated my life. Uh, and I hang out here in Columbus, Ohio, most of the time uh, when I'm not out hiking, adventuring, etc. Um, and today I have a guest with me, which is the Adam Morris, uh, a, a man of many, many talents and trades. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and let him introduce himself. Yeah, hi, I'm Adam. Um, I uh, launched Wild Tiger Tees, which is a uh, social enterprise work program for youth experiencing homelessness uh, through Give Back Hack back in 2018. Um, uh, we work in partnership with the Star House that gets about in a typical year, they have over a thousand unique youth come through their doors for services. Um, and we run a work program with those youth, teaching them how to screen print t-shirts, make mugs. Um, and this year we're, we're pairing up with some students from CCAD to pay them to learn some art design skills so they can make some t-shirt designs that we can then sell and, and build a brand around that. Um, I'm super passionate about social entrepreneurship. I run a, a podcast called People Helping People. That's all about exploring how people can make a social impact um, through business um, and social entrepreneurship. Um, and we have such a wonderful ecosystem here in Columbus between Give Back CAC and the Accelerator Sea Change and Social Ventures, which is a community organization that brings everybody together uh, who's working in various social enterprises. Um, so I'm just really glad to be able to talk about that and share that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so glad you're here, Adam, because when I was thinking about this topic, I was like, who? I know a lot of people that know a lot about social enterprise, uh, but who's talked to just about any every single person in town that does anything with social enterprise? And that's Adam, because his podcast is awesome if you're excited to learn more about what's going on uh, in Central Ohio and sometimes beyond, I think. Um, check out his podcast because he has episodes with basically anyone uh, that you'd want to learn more about with really cool in-depth uh, discussions. But before we jump in, I have to introduce one more thing to you, and that is Give Back Hack, uh, which is the force that has brought me into the social impact space uh, and brought a handful of people on this call together as well, because uh, we are one of the forces for social innovation and social enterprise in the community. Um, and I'd love to make sure that you all are super familiar with us because we'd love to see you at one of our future events. Uh, so Give Back Hack is really, we find ourselves here at the intersection of technology, of business, and social impact. Uh, really throwing on the putting on these community events that bring design thinking product management all these best practices to the social innovation space to help individuals uh, be empowered and launch entrepreneurial endeavors uh, to impact the community around them. And we teach them how to tackle the challenges that matter most to them that our communities are facing. Uh, we do that through community events uh, and you're some of the first to hear it, but we will most likely have our next community event in October. Uh, so it'll be a public event that anyone can come in and join, whether you have an idea for a new social enterprise or want to help someone develop one over the course of a week. Uh, and then we also do paid services where we bring Give Back Hack to you. If you have a student group, a corporate group, a program that you're running that you think you'd like to bring education uh, around social enterprise, social innovation, entrepreneurship to, I'd be more than excited to even just brainstorm with you or see if there's any way for us to connect. So uh, that being said, we can kind of jump right in. I'll kind of take my deck away because my hope for today is that it's kind of podcast fire chat uh, fireside chat style. Um, and I'd love actually, Adam, if we could start out, how did you first like hear about social enterprise? Like, what the, do you remember the first time you heard that word? Um, yes, it was probably in 2006. I was watching an old 60 minutes episode about the Grayston Bakery, okay. um, which if you don't know, 
um, they they started as a, a model for a hiring model, hiring people who have barriers to to jobs, uh, whether that's uh, people coming out of incarceration or other areas. Um, and they kind of exploded because they uh, they were a bakery, but they sold their brownies to Ben and Jerry's. Um, and Ben and Jerry said, yes, we'll take all your brownies. And they, they messed up <laughs> with the brownie order and uh, all the brownies were sticking together. So Ben and Jerry's was like, we'll make our, what is it? The double brownie chunk <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> um, That's awesome. But they, they've continued to grow and they've, they've been an inspiration for many, um, including you know, Joe DeLoss uh, here in Columbus who started Hot Chicken Takeover very much building upon that model from Graceton Bakery. Um, and over the years, I kind of explored a little bit about social entrepreneurship on the global scale with, you know, the kind of some of the big giants like the Aravindai Hospital in India, which is a, a buy one, give one. They, they're eliminating needless blindness in this. So they do cataract surgery and they give it away to free to a large population in India. Um, and they fund it through, uh, you know, paid services, which basically are only enhancements in in the facilities where people stay. So there's there's nicer paid facilities that you can pay for, but you get the exact same service and they service a ton of people. Um, and it's a model which has grown over the last 40 years and really impressive what they do. Um, and so when I got to Columbus, I was curious about getting into a social entrepreneurship career and I, I learned about Get Back Hack and I couldn't make it. <laughs> so I started a <laughs> podcast and I realized that Columbus is actually one of the top probably the in the top three cities in the US for a social entrepreneurship community. Like we're very fortunate here. Um, social Ventures is a, a group that, that really brings people together. Um, but the Columbus Foundation has done a huge amount of work to support um, nonprofits starting their social enterprise and then give back hack and see change, bring in new people and help them get off the ground. Um, and so we have this kind of unique ecosystem here of, of getting new people in and aware about social entrepreneurship, um, having an accelerator that can really give them support to get off the ground uh, and then community support that can help them sustain and grow. So I think we're in a really cool spot here. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think so Give Back Hack has been in, I believe, six different communities in the past. And we've had a lot of success in all of them. But when we started to kind of like take that data and distill it down, we realized that you're exactly right. There's these key pieces of an ecosystem that helps social enterprises thrive. And a lot of them are around like community foundations being invested. There has to be funding available and there has to be this pipeline. And we're just like super proud to be able to channel new folks folks uh, and all of their energy and passion and excitement into the ecosystem for sure. Um, but I guess maybe, maybe a more controversial question, how do you define a social enterprise personally? There's no right answer or no right um, answer. <laughs> so, you know, in my eyes, a social enterprise has two components. So it has a, a business component where it is, is funding its activities through some business activity. Mm -hmm. um, and on the other end, it has an impact component where it is creating an impact in the, the community. Um, and I, I really love how Joe DeLoss says this. So he says, what makes it different from just having, you know, and part of your company that's doing charity or something in the, in the community is that if you remove that impact from your business, your business would be fundamentally different. Mm -hmm. So you're, you, the reason for your business to be is that impact that you're making in the community. Um, and, you know, that impact is very broad. I, I typically look at the UN's sustainable development goals as kind of a guide of like, here's different ways you can make impact, whether that's, you know, poverty, whether that's, you know, people coming out of incarceration. So equality, issues around the environment, climate change, justice. A uh, whole whole wide set of, of issues that that people address, um, and here in Columbus, you see a lot going around with uh, you know people who've been affected by human trafficking or incarceration, um, things dealing with homelessness, um, and then things that are are helping the environment. So bringing people together to make an improvement over the environment, um, but and mental health is actually another huge one. So. Uh, you know, Morgan, what you said, like there, there's a lot of work that's being done there, um, whether that's helping give people jobs or opportunities, which they might not have, or having a business which supports 
people in that area. Yeah, it's kind of overwhelming when you list out all the social issues like that, <laughs> I feel. Um, and it's I th one of the things uh, I loved is that I got a chance to be on your podcast and we got to talk about like where to start. Uh, and I'm happy to talk about that some today, but I think that's also a great reason to go check out Adam's podcast is if you're thinking about the causes in the community that you're either actively working on or ones that you want to jump into, there's a lot of uh, different places to start um, and it can feel overwhelming, but uh, we've got tons of easy steps for you. I did want to, uh, the reason I made this deck is because I wanted to pull uh, some cheesy diagrams that other people made. I did not make these, uh, but I also pulled them two minutes before this chat, so I didn't have a chance to credit them, but these are not mine. Uh, but I wanted to kind of showcase this idea of the spectrum of social enterprise, since that is the name of this talk. Um, and I think there's a lot of ways that people like to put buckets on these things. And I really like, I agree with you, Adam, and Joe, uh, Joe DeLoss of Hatcher can take over that for me, it's really simple. It's that the impact of this like business is like core, critical, intrinsic to its existence. Uh, and it would be totally different without it. Uh, folks have lots of opinions on this. And I think that's a good thing that we're talking about it and debating it and talking about the nuance. But for me, I kind of like the bottom right-hand corner uh, diagram, which is from the Social Enterprise Alliance which is when I think of a spectrum, I think of like on the one side, you have these like purely impact endeavors, uh, which are your nonprofits. I think there's even a step below them. That's like general good deeds, like being a good person, volunteering in your community, like giving back to people you see on the street. Uh, then you have your formal nonprofits. And the other side, you have just like your normal business. And for me, everything in the middle, anything uh, that starts to swing one way or the other should and can be considered social enterprise. But if you see the more complicated uh, diagram up top, there's lots of different words, uh, buzzwords and ways to do that. Um, but I think, I, I guess I'm curious, Adam, what has talking to so many people that are across the spectrum, like, uh, I guess brought up for you or like illuminated about the space, like considering like this whole spectrum of all the different ways to make impact. Yeah, you know, I think um, one, it's it's made me realize that it's a lot easier to jump in um, to this space than than you might imagine. Um, and and so like John and, and Morgan, like you were mentioning. John, you were talking about high school students getting them involved in, in technology. Morgan, you're talking about uh, mental health um, and and people doing that, like being able to connect with events through social ventures, or even for me, like one thing I like about Give Back Hack is that ability to have people come together and and really realize that there's so many people who want to get involved in creating, you know, businesses or other organizations that are making an impact. Um, and that, you know, the, the easiest way to do that is just to start connecting with, with the people in the space. Um, because what that will do is that will foster connections that will help with ideas. Um, and that will get the people together to say, yeah, actually, I, I want to put some effort into this. Um, you, I, over the weekend, I went to the O2 conference, which, uh, is run out of the UL, ULAC church uh, over in Hilliard um, and they run something for high school students where you know they, they let their high school students pitch ideas and then they pair them with mentors um, and I was talking to David White about about this and he's seen over the kind of four years that they've done this that you know the students that came up with ideas in high school and actually got some support and some mentorship to, to start something as I've gone on to college, like they've continued to start things and continue to get involved in things. And so it's like, I think once that seed is planted of like, this is what it takes to get something off the ground, people continue doing it because it's fun and it's fulfilling. And it's like, it's rewarding to, to see that. So I think my big learning is that, you know, being able to start small and get something off the ground teaches you that it's possible. And then so much more follows after that. There's just these ripples that go out um, and those ripples over time will create huge change. 
I love that. I I really feel that I feel that about everyone that Give Back Hack works with. I think for us, it took a few years to realize like we're we're in the business of launching uh, new social enterprises and pushing them out into next steps and creating sustainable impact. But we have this secondary impact that I think you kind of nailed, which is like teaching folks the process and making it accessible to them helps them like look at the world in a different way. And that's why I love working with students and youth. We have. I think two programs coming up this year that we're finalizing uh, to work with youth and we have in the past and really like giving them in all this like passion and energy that they have like this uh, system, this structure, this training to like look at the world differently and know that they can make an impact on it. It's just like so cool and I think like truly impactful. So it's awesome that they've been able to like capture that data because that's one of those like heart things that I felt like I knew but I did <laughs> but like we haven't done enough youth programming uh to be able to follow them I'm out too many years so that that's really cool I also want to pause uh because I didn't say this at the beginning but I definitely want everyone to jump in with questions if you have anything that you want us to talk more into I think maybe something we can explore more is the Central Ohio Social Enterprise Community because it sounds like that was an interest earlier um but feels please feel free to jump in in conversation to jump in in the chat um we could definitely plug those things in as we go uh because we're just here to have a candid conversation and explore whatever you all want to hear about if I can, so just along the theme of, of you know, engaging with our youth mm -hmm. is um, coincidentally, um, ODE is changing graduation requirements mm -hmm. and encouraging students uh, to be more entrepreneurial mm -hmm. and more community active. So they're actually, um, students are going to be required to earn graduation seals. And one seal uh, that they could attain is in, you know, um, uh, community involvement and then another seal is actually in entrepreneurship mm -hmm. so you know that could intersect uh, nicely um you know it's a it's it's in effect in 2023 but all the freshmen now are kind of on that path right right uh this year and and then on to make sure by graduation that they you know can can attain these seals so that, that's just something too as as um as you broaden uh, the conversation to include youth that say, hey, you know, not, not only is this something that, you know, you're going to have um, maybe a passion towards, but it, it, it's a, it meets a dual purpose, uh, intrinsic, but also a, um, a, a practical. Uh, yeah. And, and then I, and I think it's true, too. We, we've seen that. And I love that comment that when students get involved early, they keep that. It, it gets integrated into their DNA. And you see that pursuit um, in college and beyond. Mm. Um, you know, you could you could look at uh, Claire Coder, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, <laughs> she 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 got bit by that bug of, of of something very intentional and purposeful, but then you know has just branched to to other enterprises as a result. You know, under the umbrella. So it's been great. So I, I no, I'm 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 super appreciative of being a part of this conversation. Yeah, that, that's super cool. And I, I think there's actually a great opportunity there to make that easy for high school students to get involved. One, because both in, in nonprofits, but in social enterprises, like people are always looking for help, you know, and, and hands on. And if there's a way that we can make projects that are easy for people to jump into and contribute to, then they can start to see, you know, what they can create. And one thing I love about high school students in particular is that they don't have limitations. Like they, they don't know what they can't do. And so quite often what they do surprises you because they, you know, they're, they're not held back by all these complexities that exist in the world. Like they just do it. And I, I love that kind of spirit. And I think the more that we can, you know, tap into that and bring that in, like, um, uh, just they lot. don't come into the conversation with guardrails. You're absolutely right. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And I've been proven wrong by underestimating students before. So I say that with like a knowing look. The first few times I worked with students, I was like, well, like I'm really going to have to change up the way that I facilitate, the way I teach. No, like they like have blown any professionals I've worked with out of the water. I have to say it like you, the youth are awesome. They're so, they're so great, so much energy. Um, I also wanted to bring back around for anyone who isn't familiar with Claire Coder and her company, Aunt Flo. Uh, they are a menstrual product uh, 
production company, is that the word I'm looking for, distributor. Uh, so they have a few missions and ways that they make impact. One is literally through donating menstrual products, but also a lot of their work is in just like advocacy of free menstrual products in different uh, like physical places. So whether it's schools, community centers, um, city, public buildings, uh, a lot of their work, like they are selling these products, but they're advocating for companies, cities, et cetera, schools to offer them for free uh, and making it like way easier for them to do so, which is really awesome. And it's been so great to see her on her journey. She's like very inspirational. If you don't know her, you should also look her and on flow up as well. All right. Um, I'll, yeah, if anyone else wants to jump jump in, feel free to. But one of the things I want to talk to you about. Hold on. I want to. Can I, can I jump in real quick? Yeah, please. Yeah, thanks. What, what uh, John and Adam and Emily, what you guys are saying is right on. I think the kids, you know, I tell my kids all the time is that, you know, what you guys are doing is the same thing, building a business, building a product, building something sustainable that you can do over time. Because I think kids have the opportunity of time. Whereas I think uh, young entrepreneurs that are in college or coming out of college or even older, I mean, I'm 49 today, as a matter of fact, happy birthday. Just happy a little birthday. plug. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks. Um, but, uh, you know, some people get that you know, mindset of a unicorn or I need to get the VC or I need to get that capital or I need to get that money or I need to get that hustle. Um, when, you know, I tell people, hey, building a business over time is going to benefit you. I, I know people like they talk about runways and running out of runway and running out of cash. Absolutely. That's important. Um, but I think students and younger people have that, you know, mindset of, well, I have some time. Right. And building a business is something that takes time. And, you know, I tell my kids, hey, everybody has an idea. I don't know how many people I've talked to that had, you know, this idea, or that idea. And I've had good ideas or bad ideas, you know, but you put it to the paper and that's step one, right? You know, having that idea and then putting it on paper. And then step two is having somebody buy into that paper that you just put down on, you know, that idea. And then having somebody help you build that because you can't build it by yourself. We all, we can't build things by ourselves. And then having that product actually, you know, get something, whether it's software, whether it's an actual product and then having somebody buy the product. I mean, all these steps take so much time and energy that people think, oh, I have an idea and it's gonna make a billion dollars. <laughs> that doesn't happen, you know? I mean, it does rarely, but for the most part, we have this idea, we put it on paper, then we start building it. And it takes a couple of years to really get that thing out there and then have somebody, you know, hey, that's a good idea, I'd like to buy it. But usually it's somebody going, oh, that's kind of good. You know, maybe. And then you come back and you iterate it and you iterate it and you iterate it and you change it. And then, you know, a year later, you come back and you're like, OK, I got something. They're like, OK, you know what? I'll buy that. Um, so what you guys are doing is absolutely fantastic. We're putting these young people to the task and saying, hey, what's your idea? And is it sustainable? Is it something that's going to benefit society? I mean, those things are fantastic. I just want to put that out there. Um, and, you know, it's taken me a while to, you know, you think about money and you think about putting kids to college. You think about this, but, you know, come to a point in your life, you're like, you know what? I want to make more of a difference. I want to make things that, that you know, obviously I think I have things that matter, but I want to make sure it matters to the most people that can. Um, so I just want to say kudos to you guys and, and thanks. Yeah, and I think what you said about, you know, you have an idea and then you iterate on it and you develop it, having that flexibility and, and just openness to not cling to your your initial idea, but to be able to go out and test it and get feedback on it. Um, is super critical. One, because you develop a better product, but but two, there's so much learning that comes from that, right? So a, as you actually take those steps and you get something out there and you start getting that feedback, you actually start understanding what people need more and what their pain points are more. Um, with social entrepreneurship, you're also going out into the community and actually talking to people who are afflicted by something which you might not understand. Maybe you do have personal experience with it, um, you know, for me with Wild Tiger Teas, I had no experience with youth homelessness um, or homelessness other than volunteering in the past. Um, but it wasn't until we had actually started talking to the youth and, and working with them that we realized that it was a lot more complex than I had ever imagined. Everyone is just really different. You know, they, they have similar traumatic backgrounds, but really being able to adapt and, and, and develop what we're offering just through those human connections. Like I think being out there, you start to learn and you develop just because you're, you're there and you're showing up to do it. Um, and that that's rewarding because you're actually developing those connections with people. Absolutely agree. And I think you're, you're, you hit the, it on the head too with understanding when you're out there doing the work, you know, you see what you can do and how you can change your product or change your uh, business model. 
to, to, you know, go along with your integrity and the empathy that you feel as a person. And not everybody feels the same. And I don't expect everybody to feel the same, nor should everybody, you know, we all have our own backgrounds. We all have what we care about and what we don't care about. Um, so I don't expect people to do everything right, whatever that is to them. Um, but when we see something, we want to make a change and we can do something about it. I think it's our right and our privilege and our opportunity and what we should do to, to make that change as much as possible. Um, so, and us, and for me, it, you know, it's healthcare, you know, it's health equity, meaning that, you know, everybody has the opportunity to be as healthy, um, as they can be. So that's, that's what we're trying to do. And that's, that's super important, especially when healthcare is so expensive and, and really there are a lot of barriers. Um, I think, you know, th there's one, one aspect to that as well of like, yeah, they're the people who, are, who have that spark and say, yeah, I'm going to go and start something and, and I'm going to push through and figure it out. Um, but there's this whole pool of people where they don't even know that they can, right? It's never been presented to them in life that, yeah, anybody can dive in and, and be an entrepreneur. You don't have to have all the pieces to the puzzle. You just have to show up and, you know, the people will come together to help you create that fill in that puzzle. You don't have to have all the pieces. Um, and for me, like give back hack has always been like this really magical place where people come in without this expectation of it, of like, yeah, I'm going to start a company and be a successful entrepreneur, but they come in and they work together in teams. And there's this realization that, that goes on of, of seeing that, yeah, I can actually start something um, and be involved in something, even if I'm not a business major or an entrepreneur by, by spirit or whatever, um, that I could just have a passion for, for something and be able to figure it out. And that, that being able to just experience that you are able to do this is really powerful in creating new, new social entrepreneurs. Yeah, I mean, I agree with everything you've said, Adam. Very, very well said. I think one thing that we haven't touched on that I'd be curious to talk about a little bit more is we've been talking a lot about like if you already have the heart and you're drawn by the issues and if you're very entrepreneurial and startup minded. Uh, but I think uh, the interesting thing is like, why do we why do we do social enterprise instead of just like starting another nonprofit or starting a community group effort or just like volunteering? Like, why do we do that? And honestly, I'm going to jump in first, if you don't mind, because uh, when I was thinking about when I first discovered social enterprise and why it was so like powerful to me, it's I think there's just like this opportunity of like the sustainability word that we throw around a lot. Uh, of thinking about like the impact you want to actually create, uh, how to do it is a whole nother thing, but how to keep doing it and how to make sure that that change is not just dependent on you as a person showing up every Saturday morning, uh, both for scalability reasons to make more and more impact in the future, but also for making sure that even when donations are down because we're in a pandemic or even because um, like priorities have changed or those sorts of things that you are still like independently sustainable financially, I think for me is important. And we talk about sustainability in terms of the money, but that impact, that is a direct translation to sustainability of the impact from my perspective. So I don't know if you had any thoughts on that either, Adam or anyone else, feel free to jump in. Uh, yeah, you know, I've, I've, if I'm talking to Emily Savers at the Columbus Foundation, um, she's always mentioned how you know, for nonprofits competing for, for grant funding, uh, you know, there's three people for every, you know, one grant that they have to give out. Um, and so it's competitive and they have to turn down people. Um, whereas with social entrepreneurship, there is that hope of, of becoming self-sustainable where you won't rely on those grant funding dollars. So that continued impact of your business, being able to generate the funds that you need to create that impact is, is super important. Um, but there's a, a lot of different models that, that go into that in different ways people approach that. Um, from, you know, I, I think of people starting their, their bakeries like Amanda in the 1429, you know, where she's taking her business and she has that impact behind her, her bakery um, and just watching her grow that, like she can create her livelihood through the impact that she's making um, while doing something that she enjoys. So she can marry that, that baking with, um, you know, doing some work to reduce human trafficking. Uh, at the same time. Um, then you have the, the companies like Clean Turn, right? And John Rush, right? So really, you know, 
they're they're not as visible as hot chicken takeover, but you know they're they're offering the cleaning and demolition services and hire a lot of people. Um, and John Rush has been just a staple in the community for teaching others how to hire people coming out of prison, right? So when with this business model, like he can run a self-sustaining business that that can afford to hire people and give them jobs and give them that support that they need to get back on their feet, right? So in this case, like having you know a business that can do that can provide opportunities for other people, right? And a lot of this work in this hiring space is about giving people the right type of support that they need because it's different from just, you know, somebody who knows how to show up to a job or who's been working for a while. Um, but then there's also this, you know, if when one company figures that out, something about the social entrepreneurship space is they're always sharing how they, they, they run their business, right? Um, Kenny from the Roosevelt Coffee House has told me that when he started the Roosevelt, he drove around and, and looked at other coffee shops and, and, you know, another coffee shop in, I think it was Tennessee or somewhere, shared with him everything about running their business, like, you know, what their, their business plan looked like, what their financials looked like, what they needed, what they didn't expect. Um, and I found this true in, in Columbus, that social enterprises help each other out. Like, if, if somebody figures out they want to share that knowledge um, so other people can grow um, less of that business mindset of, you know, we're two companies that are competing for the same dollar, because in this sense, if you can lift each other up, then you're expanding your impact, even if it's another person that's doing that. Um, so I, there's this other dimension to that money, which is like working together, we're more collaborative. And there's just this kind of different subtle approach that people take. Um, which creates more opportunity. Yeah, and I think that goes back even to what Morgan was talking about of how you can't do it alone. Like anyone who's ever had an idea is uh, probably a powerful and great person on their own, but you can't take an idea through execution by yourself in a vacuum. And I think it's like a che cheesy old adage maybe, but like it does take a village to do a lot of things and entrepreneurship and social impact are definitely no exception. And I think that the benefit they come with is a mission that's worth fighting for. And so like that sense of community, reaching out for help, building your support system, uh, I think is, is so crucial. And also something that when I talk to people from other communities, uh, whether they have a social enterprise ecosystem or not, I come to find more and more is very unique and special in Columbus. Um, I haven't lived many other places, but uh, when I've talked to folks about their ecosystems, I get a lot of like, oh, people are kind of suspicious and like kind of protective and they're excited to go to events and network, but they wouldn't necessarily always like help you with your grant application if you needed it or those sorts of things. But I think in Columbus, there's definitely just like this really unique community that I'm super thankful for to be able to depend on and uh, use to like build the system larger together. Um, and actually our last Tech Life Live, which I don't know if anyone was at the last one with um, the U Urban Accelerator talking about black entrepreneurship spaces, they talked about this idea of like, communities building together that like the better you do, the better I do, the better the whole community is. And that's how like Columbus got a fashion scene and Columbus got a health tech scene because everyone independently uh, was getting better, but that was lifting kind of everyone else up. And now like we're a more flourishing community because of it, which it's a really cool perspective I hadn't really thought about, but it's, it's really awesome. Uh, one thing I just want to jump on, uh, piggyback on what Adam was saying too, I think just to add one little thing about um, social entrepreneurship, I think in that space, it, it also provides the proof of concept, right, Adam? Um, you know, you can have this business idea, which we talked about in the beginning of, you know, you know, you put it on paper, then somebody actually buys it. But if you're doing something good, I mean, there's, there's, I don't know, countless number of examples, people have the right moral idea right and thought for caring for other people but it just isn't the right business model it doesn't work um so it kind of almost saves you know the, the funding process from organizations saying okay well, we can fund you better right now that we know this is something you've been doing for a year two years three years and saying hey this is this is a business model that you have you're helping people you've got something to show us it's almost like going to a bank for a loan Right, they're not going to give a startup a, a loan if you've got zero clients, zero money coming in, but you've got this idea on paper and you're showing. But but look, this is so good, 
Um, it doesn't really work that way. And the same thing for, you know, social entrepreneurship, where you have this proof of concept and it's working. I think maybe that's what Adam was talking about too and alluding to. Um, but it, it, it just, it, it helps, you know, when you've got a business that's working and you're also helping people. Um, I think some people lose sight of making the money um, and that's the lead when, you know, the lead can be also, hey, I can make some money, but I can also do some good. Um, you know, that's, that's the gravy, um, you know, but we're not all there uh, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think, so that's part of the magic of Give Back Hacks uh, process as well, that we bring folks in uh, to pitch ideas, develop businesses, launch them into the future, right? We're through a weekend, a week, whatever our program is. But we also fund really early stage social enterprises, uh, which not a lot of other people do. So we're excited to be able to provide that funding, but we hold them accountable to two things with that funding. They have to continue to iterate on their idea with the funding. So they can't just use it to, they started in a weekend and all of a sudden now they're building an app. Uh, they have to iterate on their idea with the money. And then they also have to create impact while they do that. Uh, and that's not a, a process that I came up with, but now that I've managed it for a while, I realize that there's a lot of like intention behind like holding people accountable to like growing and impacting the community at the same time. Um, and I know like Adam's been through this process. I don't know if I knew uh, Lydia, also has been through the process, but I think you're right, like making sure that uh, teams and organizations as they grow, keep both in mind is definitely really important. I'd love to hear from some of the other people who, who've joined. Um, one, like where you are, what you'd like to get out of this and what questions you have. Matt or Elizabeth or Michelle, Jonathan, KK, Lydia. Rachel. I'll, I'll jump in just so that you guys aren't the only ones talking here. Um, I would say that pre 40s, I was very involved with United Way, Help Launch Gen Next. It just seemed very easy to get involved in community um, events. And now that I've hit over 40 and no longer, you know, young Columbus, um, you know, philanthropic groups just didn't seem to be there. So recently I joined the Dublin Dublin Women's Philanthropic Club. And then when this popped up in the tech life, I was like, oh, okay, interesting. There's other, other groups that are doing cool things in the community. And John, what you shared with the, the city, or it sounds like the schools, um, kind of like encouraging, but requiring that involvement in the social you know, where the, so what is it, social and entrepreneurship kind of meet. I didn't even know that this was a space. So, I mean, I had heard about the cafe downtown and Adam, just you sharing about the company. I didn't know Tiger Tea um, had like the social impact that you were making. So now when I order my tchotchkes, I would definitely uh, be interested in looking up. I just, I like um, being open to learning about new things. And that's what this was about for me, Emily, honestly. Yeah, so if you are excited to learn more about lots of social enterprises in Central Ohio, Adam referenced this organization earlier called Social Ventures. One of the key things that they do is on their website, they have a social enterprise marketplace that has like hundreds of different organizations, whether you're looking to grab coffee at Freedom a la carte uh, or print uh, custom printed t-shirts with wild tiger tees uh, or get your house cleaned by clean turn. There's lots of different organizations there. And for me, like when I was first diving into this space, that's all I did. I literally would Google social enterprise and then just like scan forever and just like get so much inspiration from all the incredible things that folks are doing. But also if you're looking to make a little more impact in your own life, there's lots of companies that do the things and services you're already consuming that you can make a little bit more impact through. So I'm glad you're here and I'm glad we can share some information that's helpful. Uh, and I dropped that link in the chat, uh, that social ventures, cbus.com slash marketplace. Um, and that is a great way to go. One, because you're supporting local companies, um, which, Irregardless of if they're social enterprise or not, that that's just very great for our community. Um, but it's also a great way to just kind of see the diversity of ideas around social entrepreneurship and what's possible. Um, and then the the other place you can go is if if you Google B Corps, um, B Labs is the organization that manages the B Corp certification. Uh, and and globally, there are a lot of companies which are registered as B Corps 
where they've had to demonstrate um, their their impact and their uh, environmental sustainability in different factors. Um, and, and they are required to report on that openly every year in order to maintain their certification. Um, and so that's often a great place to go to kind of learn about that. Um, we've had a, a few here in Columbus. Uh, Lydia, who's on the call, used to work for Fulcrum Creatives, which um, was a B Corp marketing agency. Um, I see Michelle Reese. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if she's related to Matt Reese, who is running his photography studio and trying to get his B Corp certification at one point, um, where you know Matt Reese was a photo photographer and he was just using his basic business to, um, when he was doing a headshot, he was giving away a headshot to somebody in need uh, and helping them build up their LinkedIn profile. So there's a lot of different ways people have incorporated this in. Um, into their business models and what they're doing. So just endless, endless cool stuff. Hey, Adam, Hi, I, I, I wish I was related to Matt Reese. He sounds fantastic, uh, but no, I'm not. So I, I actually work with Ben Blancara and I'm on the Tech Life um, you know, mailing list like many of you, but I, I just jumped at this opportunity. I have been contemplating and not doing enough about figuring out where I fit personally in this space for all my work life. And I just loved your uh, model, Emily, that you shared that you said wasn't, wasn't the one you created, but really well articulated that spectrum. And this concept has sort of been speaking to me for a couple of years, just because I, I kind of thought it was a choice between for-profit and non-for-profit. And I just love this middle space that says you don't have to make that, that choice. You can do good, you know, in so many different ways. So I've had the benefit of consulting with people like um, Chuck Gehring from Life Care Alliance and Alan Proctor over the years and sort of just, again, um, meeting people in the community to figure out where um, this might fit for me between personal life and work life. And I was just happy to hear you all uh, here. And I'm, I sent you an invite already, Emily. I, I, I just wanted to hear from the people in our community who are making such a difference and um, thank you. So I'm, I'm here to listen and learn and you may be hearing from me, um, but I'll definitely be checking out the Social Ventures site as well. So thank you. Awesome, yeah, so glad you're here, Michelle and excited to connect with all of you. I think, uh, oh gosh, what was I just about to say? Oh, the one side of things that we didn't really talk about too much, but I do think is interesting is we kind of talked about this low side of the spectrum, if you will, like the impact side, but there's also this other side where you start as a company and you're like, wait a second, I, we could be doing more good. Uh, and sometimes that just looks like community engagement and corporate philanthropy, but there's also the other way. And the other thing we didn't talk about is uh, tech social enterprises, <laughs> which are a thing. Uh, it sounds like that's a lot of the work that Morgan's doing and also like through the Give Back Hack Network and other, uh, other organizations in Central Ohio, we have lots of uh, folks making impact through scalable technology, which is really a lot of what we're trying to inspire through Give Back Hack. We welcome all social enterprises in whatever format. Uh, but for me, like I'm really excited about technology that can scale impact into the future and just like continue to have larger effects. I know uh, one of Adam and I's favorites uh, is Honest Jobs, which is a job platform specifically for uh, folks coming out of incarceration. Uh, they're the only, I think Adam actually might know, might know more. I'm going to volley it over to you, Adam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I, Harley Lakeman, um, it, it, you know, it's just really great. Um, And you know he started this this platform uh, initially as an education tool for educating people in, in prison on, on what they could do when they come out, and it, it turned into um, a job board after many iterations of here are job opportunities that people who are coming out of the prison system can can look for and get into. Um, one because they just face so much rejection, um, mm -hmm. and so so reducing that, making that. Um, and he went through the Techstars Accelerator um, and got some funding uh, at the end of the year. He's just really growing. It's really exciting to see him be able to bring that on. Um, yeah. And uh, I've, it's, it's interesting. He's, um, his, uh, his aunts that he stayed with uh, afterwards are family friends of my parents. My parents went to his grandparents' college and they were they were friends so I did not um, know that <laughs> so you know I, I've known um I really didn't know much about Harley's story until after he started Honest Jobs and then it was like oh wow um that he's able to actually pull the people together to actually get this off the ground 
That's um, awesome. But we, there's a lot of technology platforms, right? Uh, so Ryan's uh, launching Benefier, which is a, a chat bot for, for kids in the hospital system uh, who don't get the, the psychological support, right? There's no funding for that. So a tool where they can capture data to give them better support, um, but also some interim uh, help of just capturing where they are from day to day. Um, and then Jerry from Renter Mentor, who was working in the Columbus uh, uh, housing department um, and realized that, you know, people being able to use their Section 8 house, housing vouchers was near impossible, like the, the existing solution just didn't work. And building a platform that connects landlords and, and tenants together so that they can use those uh, housing vouchers to find housing in a more better way. And like Jerry's just done a phenomenal job and no technology background. He's been able to build a technology team, launch a platform, iterate on it and grow it. Um, and Jerry's a great example of like somebody who, who had one piece of the puzzle of like understanding the problem, but none of the technology skills or other things. Um, and, you know, coming together with, with other people uh, he met through Get Back actually um to to build that platform and launch it so there's just a lot of different ways that people can uh come together to solve these problems um even if they're not a lifelong developer or technology person but they always need technology help so there's always opportunities there yeah absolutely i yes i love all of these people jerry and his team are just like they're awesome uh they've been running for two years now and they're just about to i think they're launching their beta like now basically if not within the next month or so which is awesome um and we're actually behind the scenes about to wrap up a video like showcasing the renter mentor story and like showing the give back hack process because they're just like this awesome case study of like our process being super impactful. So that'll be out on our social media and email lists and things. Um, but I wanted to kind of just like wrap everything up since we uh, tied impact in a bow, tied how to get things started in a bow and youth. And we've talked about uh, corporations and their impact and also uh, technology impact. We've covered a lot. Also the social enterprise community in Columbus, lots of things we talked about. Um, but I wanted to thank all of you and specifically Adam for being here. If we can give Adam just like a, a round of applause, that would be awesome. Thank you, Adam. Um, and we have a few more minutes, but I know, first of all, we have polls that we need to take, I believe. Uh, and also I just wanna give the rest of the space for if anyone has questions, we're happy to answer them. Also for everyone to connect, network, uh, send LinkedIn connections, whatever, whatever you want, but we will stick around here for the last 10 minutes of our hour together. But thank you all for joining us. This has been awesome. Uh, <clears throat> so really quickly, I'm just going to post a link. And that link has a form uh, to sign up for email notifications from Tech Life for all these kind of meetups that they're hosting, if anybody would like to sign up to that. And then I'm also going to uh, launch a poll. If you, if you could take it, please, that would be greatly appreciated. Sweet. I'm excited to connect with all of you. Uh, I'm going to try and get in as many as I can while we hang out here. Um, but especially with the work you're doing in education, John, I'd love to 
love to chat sometime if you're up for it. Yeah, and I have some ideas I'd love to <laughs> chat as well. But with all of you, like I'm always here and available to talk, so. Um, yeah, real quick um, for the groups. My name's Matt, it's Eric. Um, so I've been in and around for the social enterprise scene as a, um, I guess, sea change accelerator and a couple other things um, over the years. And then um, I guess self-serving plug here. So um, I know we mentioned like social ventures and a couple other organizations, but um, during my day job, I work for EY, um, obviously with the Zoom. Um, and so one of my roles for Columbus is our corporate responsibility program is called EY Ripples. So that's a global uh, ambition to impact 1 billion lives, uh, focus areas of sustainability, impact entrepreneurship, um, and next generation workforce. So um, I specifically for kind of like our Midwest region and like an impact entrepreneurship um, lead or captain, whatever you want to call it. And so we've done a couple different pilots in the, um, with social ventures, but essentially what the ripples platform is, is, um, nonprofits or social enterprises can apply for traditional services that EY would offer to fortune 500 companies, um, at cost. So no cost to those organizations. Um, and there's different criteria, but essentially it could be anything from a consultation um, up to like they've um, uh, some cases done like full ERP implementation. So um, there's kind of like an application process and I can throw a link in the chat here if anyone's interested. Um, but we're just kind of getting started in Columbus. And if anyone's interested in learning more, feel free to reach out. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome, Matt. I would love to share that like with our Give Back Hack network, if that's cool. Um, we it's been... actually, I, I can give a good testimonial because I, I, Wild Tiger Tees uh, had some help from me why in the Ripples program oh, um, awesome. and super useful just for us, just helping us with our roadmap of, of you cool. know, what our immediate needs are versus kind of our, our long, longer term plan. Um, and we got some support, support coming in who helped us just kind of analyze our initiatives um, and look at what some of our strengths and weaknesses were, but also give us a good idea of like, hey, here's, here's the immediate low hanging fruit that we can focus on and here's some of the longer term objectives um, and laying out a, a nice timeline for that, which really helped. So uh, it's very cool that, that that's a resource for yeah. uh, groups in our community. I'm um, very helpful. So thank that's you, awesome. Matt, for the work that you're doing on that. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of our work is connecting entrepreneurs as well into all of their next steps after coming up with an idea. So that'll be really good to be able to send folks your way. Yeah. So just for context, the first link I dropped in is kind of like the um, like global intake process, um, which can just kind of give you, if you're not familiar with some of the different like services and stuff that EY offers that people might not be aware of. Um, and then just dropped in my personal contact too. So if you will, anyone wants more kind of one-on-one -on -one and uh, stuff like that, happy to talk through unique situations, so. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Well, cool. This has been such a good way to, I guess, start my hump day of the week. This has been awesome, everyone. I'm so glad that you joined us today. Like I said, I shall stick around. Um, excited to connect with you all. And go listen to Adam's podcast. Adam, drop the link to your podcast. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Uh, yeah. uh, Emily, thank you so much for hosting and for yes. Tech Life uh, uh, producing this. And uh, Adam, thanks for also being a strong facilitator of the conversation. So thanks, yeah. everybody. I look forward to connecting on LinkedIn. Uh, just a, a friendly reminder, um, don't forget to save your chat with all these LinkedIn links. Um, so we'll look forward to connecting in the future. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, Emily, I've got my 100th episode coming up on my podcast, and I am having Joe DeLoss as my 100th guest. Ah, so I'm very awesome. excited. 
that's so great. So Joe, um, it's actually a funny story. So the first social enterprise event I ever went to at Ohio State, uh, I didn't know that Ohio State did anything social enterprise and they don't do a ton if we're being honest, but I didn't know there was anything. And I found out he was speaking somewhere and I was like, oh my gosh, this is my chance. And so I went and I heard him speak and it was awesome, but it ended up being like me in the middle of like this program I wasn't in. So like a hundred students that all knew each other and then like just me as a freshman. <laughs> And then afterwards, I went up to introduce myself to him. And I've never been so nervous about anything in my life. Like I like couldn't get my words out. Like it was really embarrassing. And then I introduced myself to uh, Aaron Halloran, who is now a very good friend of mine. Um, but I had never met her before. She was an intern for Hot Chicken Takeover. And I literally was like, hi, like, my name's Emily. I really like social enterprise. We should be friends. <laughs> and she gave me her business card, which is just hilarious. Again, like, this is a very close friend of mine. <laughs> and it's just, like, the funniest, most embarrassing story that, like, was this scene to, like, the rest of my career so far. Erin <laughs> yeah. Halloran actually set the the groundwork for a lot of what Wild Target's doing at the Star House. So she she was the initial person kind of working on the work program initiative at the star house um and really helped us get some of our our framework in place so another cool person <laughs> I remember when she was working on that too and i like kind of missed the gap between like Aaron working on that and then like the work that Russ has done the work that you all have done the work that I think Amanda's connected with Star House too right Amanda yeah, yeah she is up and running again Amanda with pedals uh, that inspired yeah um, oh we didn't even mention her and she's selling flowers all over the city this week and weekend yeah. she, she's <laughs> she has a busy week ahead of her for Mother's yeah. Day uh, her mother is flying into town to help her um, um, she's going to be at the uh, farmer's market um, I think the Clintonville's farmer market on Saturday Okay. Um, yeah, I saw I saw their Instagram. I'm excited to buy flowers from her. Tons of great stuff going on. Yeah. But thanks awesome. everyone for yeah. Thanks us. everyone so much. Thank you. Learned a ton. You guys are great. Thanks. Oh, thanks. I'm Michelle. Great to meet you. Hi, you too. Cool. Uh, Rachel left. <laughs> I was gonna say that we should have plugged her plant social enterprise. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not functioning yet, but the next time I do something it's coming. like this. So I love it. Adam, thank you. This was great. Cool. Have a great rest of your day. Yeah, you too. I appreciate it. Thank you as well, always, for uh, facilitating and Zooming. Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you, guys. Have a good one. Yep. Thanks. See ya. Bye. Bye.